so it is New Year's Eve and my exciting New Year's Eve plans are starting seeds for next spring. Um, this is something I usually do New Year's Day, but um, starting a day early. So why, why start seeds indoors? Most people usually think that's something that um, people in cold climates do because uh, they have short summer, so you gotta get started super early um, and take advantage of that short time you have where it's warm enough to grow. But it's also useful for people like me who live in hot climates as well because um, our spring is so short and summer heats up real fast and it lasts a real long time and it burns up all your plants. So if you can get some decent sized plants in the ground um, as soon as the first frost is over, uh, then you have a decent amount of time to get some produce off of them. I usually start um, tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that in the winter time to get them in the ground in the springtime. Um, I'm gonna change it up a little bit this time and plant some exotic seeds that I've been uh, hanging on to or I, I was also gifted some for Christmas. So I'm gonna try those out, but concept's the same for everybody. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today. Another great reason to start your plants indoors is uh, money, of course. Um, you could just chill all winter long and when springtime comes, go buy some starts at the farmer's market from your local supplier, what have you, um, but that gets expensive really fast. If you have a lot of space to fill, um, it adds up pretty quickly compared to the price of seeds a uh, seed packet, you know, run you a couple bucks and you could theoretically get dozens of plants out of it. Whereas a start might cost you, you know, three, four, five, six dollars uh, each. Um, and then when you get to the point where you're saving seeds too, then it's like zero investment in um, starting seeds and plants every year. So save those dollars. So what do you need to get this project going? Uh, first of all, you need something to put your seeds in, some kind of pots. So that could add up pretty quickly, but there are um, several workarounds that are free or cheap that you can use. Um, one of which is pretty popular are the newspaper pots. I got this sales circular uh, yesterday and folded it up and Easy peasy. I'm not gonna go through the instructions on these because there are probably a bazillion tutorials out there. But it's really simple. I put this together in about a minute. Um, so, and the great thing about these and any kind of paper ones is that uh, you can just stick them right in the ground when the plants are big enough and this will just disintegrate. So you don't have to worry about transplant shock or anything like that. So that's, that's one option. Uh, another one, if you dig around in your bathroom wastebasket, teepee rolls. Uh, these are a little more sturdy than the newspaper pots, but same idea. You just make some slits around the bottom and, and kind of pleat to make a, a solid bottom. You shouldn't need tape or anything like that once there's soil in there. It's still a little delicate, so help them out. Um, teepee rolls, paper towel rolls, anything like that. You can use these. I'm sure there are tutorials online too. Um, dig around in the recycle bin. I found this half and half bottle. Um, I would cut this in half. And since it's plastic, this is not one you can stick in the ground and it's gonna need drainage. So poke some holes in here. And then you can even use this top half like a cloche for starting your seeds and uh, keep them warm, um, protect the seedlings from birds or <clears throat> cats. Uh, so look in there if you have yogurt cups, um, anything like that, use them up. Um, Starbucks cups or your local independent coffee shop cups. Um, also uh, egg crates, I used egg crates for years. I don't have any to show you right now, but um, make sure you use the fiber ones and not the styrofoam ones. Um, they are great. You can obviously get a dozen, in each, a dozen seedlings in each one. Same kind of thing with these since they're fiber. Uh, you can just kind of tear them apart when they're ready to put them in the ground, stick them in the ground. Um, my only issue with the egg cartons is um, they're not particularly deep. So one important thing when you're starting seeds is to um, 
you want to foster an environment where they can really grow good roots because without good roots, the plant is not going to thrive. It'll probably survive, but it's not going to thrive. So you need to have a really good root system. If you have a little money to spend, then you can look at things like these peat pots. Um, they are pretty inexpensive, same concept. They degrade in the soil with moisture. Um, they come in all sorts of sizes, little dinky ones, bigger ones, like super size. Um, these are the ones that I got gifted this year, so I'm excited to use those. Um, they work pretty great. Um, downside is, you know, you can't use them year after year after year. Uh, you can also get some pretty cheap little small nursery pots. I had to do that one year when I ran out of containers. I was super ambitious. I wanted to grow a thousand things. Ran out of containers, so I ordered, I don't know, 20 or something online, and it was maybe five dollars. They weren't the most long-lasting things, but they did the job. So there are options like that out there. And also when I do buy starts, I save all those little nursery pots, uh, little four by four square ones. Um, uh, often I save those though to pot up from this size to the four by four pots. Another thing you often see are these little kits and they come with uh, these pods. This is the one that's been rehydrated. Uh, it's got a little fiber mesh around it and then coconut core in the middle. I used these last year and honestly I wasn't really a fan. Um, mainly because I don't feel like they expand enough and also that there's enough um, air pockets in here for the roots to really branch out. I ended up with a lot of starts that had, you know, sad little roots or not very deep roots and they were runty little plants and they just didn't thrive. So not a big fan of these. I'll probably, I probably just soak them and I'll cut the fiber off and use the coconut core. So might as well use them if you got them, right? Which brings me to seed starting medium. Uh, they make bag mixes of uh, seed starter mix that you can definitely use and they work great. Um, you can DIY your own formula. Uh, the main part is it has to be loose enough for those roots to grow and retain moisture, but also drain. It seems contradictory, but should be able to do both. You don't want those roots getting bogged down, um, but you do want to allow them plenty of moisture. What I'm doing this year is gifted with these were some um, little pods or pucks of the peat mixture, and you're supposed to just stick them in those pots and let them rehydrate. I threw them all in one bucket and uh, let them let them hydrate. So I'm gonna mush this all up into my own custom mix. Um, don't worry about fertilizer or any kind of nutrition at this point. It's just, you wanna have a nice clean and um, loose medium to uh, get your seeds started. just uh, peat, pretty sure. We've got our seeds uh, out for which pots are going, which are going where, and we're gonna need a way to identify them. So we have plant markers. These came with some of the seeds, so that'll be a good start. I also happen to have a boatload of popsicle sticks, so those will cover the rest, but you could use all sorts of things. You can stick a clothespin on there and write on it. Um, I, if you've taken down plastic blinds, people use those. People cut up strips of yogurt cup. Um, just look on Pinterest, whatever you find a million ideas. So just use whatever you have. Need 
to check your seed pack is to find out the planting depth um, of your seeds, but these don't say, so I am gonna play it safe and just sprinkle them on top and just a little dusting of mix on top of it. Um, that's usually a safe bet, uh, especially with tiny seeds. You want them kind of near the surface. Bigger seeds, like these are seeds I've collected myself, so there are no planting instructions. But this is like a nut, peanut sized seed. I'm probably, and it also grows into uh, a bush. So I'm probably gonna put that pretty deep. Similarly with these wolfberries. Um, they are smaller seeds, but I, I think they probably need to go a little deeper, but I'll, I'll Google it just to be sure. I also got these goji berries, which are basically the same thing as wolfberry. Difference is the wolfberries are naturalized here in the Southwest, and so they've been here for a while. And so these are collected locally. These, as you can see, they might be from China. So it'll be interesting to compare the two. seeds and some of these and that's just because these pots are rather large um, what I'll probably end up doing is once they get to a certain size I'll thin them out and maybe in these big guys leave four that uh, hopefully I can divide um, smaller ones uh, maybe three in here also with the strawberries I could probably have let two or three grow in those uh, before I divide them into their own pots um, I did that just because they were kind of small seed packets and uh, some of these others I put a ton of these wolf berries in here um, Just because I'm not sure if they're going to germinate because they're seeds I saved um, I also do that with any old seeds Just to kind of stack the deck in my favor. Just throw as many seeds as you can in there um, And hope for the best So now we have to uh, Get them the essentials which are heat and light so here we are in the shed, the me shed, but please leave by nine. Anywho, this is our little grow set up here and I'll give you the detailed tour. And see, um, this is a glue light I got in 2013 and it is still chugging along. Um, it, had, it came with this frame right here and a stand but I modified it so that it fits in the bottom of this shelving unit that I got at Ikea for, I don't remember, but it was cheap. And same with the grow mat. I think I got it same year, 2013, off Amazon. Works great. Some electricity from the house comes in through that hole down here and there's a little T thing and it goes to the light and the mat. Turn the light on and off here lower it with this thingy um, which is important when you're seed starting so you're going to need something under your little pots that holds water i got this roasting pan from the dollar store for thanksgiving we never ended up using it so perfect for this um, something that's not going to melt on the heat mat the heat mat doesn't really produce a whole lot of heat but you know if you have like a metal serving tray or something like that that would work um, because as these things get bigger, once they come up, um, we're going to want to water from the bottom to encourage those roots. That's all set. I'm just going to give them a quick water. And the other important thing is to get this light as close to the surface of the soil as possible. Otherwise your plants are going to reach and get really leggy. So I'm going to get this way down as close as possible to these. 
got it about as low and the plants as centered as possible. Um, they really do make uh, newer, more efficient versions of those that are like multiple LEDs and they have a whole spectrum of rays and stuff like that. So I probably will upgrade um, whenever this thing thing decides to give up or maybe I'll expand and have uh, two shelves to grow on. So um, yeah, they do make fancier versions of these now. I ended up doing a quick side project of uh, using that half and half bottle to make a gentle sprinkler. So I just ran the drill on the top a couple dozen times. We'll take it for a test drive here. Give it a squeeze. Oh yeah, that works pretty well. Yeah, there you go.